Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody, consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. Today we talk about a slightly theoretical subject but which has significant implications on our day-to-day -day practice. The question we ask is, is oocyte quality affected by endometriosis? A review of literature published in the Journal of Ovarian Research, 2017. An extremely good article which will give us an idea about how we are approaching the subject of endometriosis. What does endometriosis do? It causes an anatomic distortion and tubal occlusion at times due to pelvic adhesions, inflammatory cytokines and impaired endometrial receptivity. There is no comprehensive evaluation on oocyte quality, so we just don't know whether oocytes are affected. If you look at this slide, and in short, what does endometriosis do and what impact does it have on the oocyte? There is an impact on mitochondrial content. You see dark central granulations. Remember when the embryologist comes back to you and says, I can see dark oocytes. They are spindle abnormalities. Have a look at the picture and that will give you a better idea. And the zona, what covers the egg, starts getting hardened. So it seems to be a morphological as well as a quality decline that takes place in the oocyte. Let's go to stereogenesis. Now, what does an oocyte required. It requires an increasing amount of estrogen. It's a two cell process. The granular cells under the aromatase activity start producing more estrogen. This estrogen is crucial for follicular development and leads to a competent metaphase 2 oocytes, in short, called an M2 oocytes, which can be fertilized. Several studies have shown that the aromatase P450 is decreased affecting stereogenesis. You see lower levels of estrogen in women with endometriosis. You see lower estrogen levels at trigger and you see an altered post ovulatory progesterone. So it clearly seems that endometriosis affects stereogenesis. Does endometriosis also disrupt intrafollicular environment? And you must have heard a lot about oxidative stress. We, use, we say oxidative stress has an impact on implantation, on sperm quality. Whether it damages oocytes, the evidence is not entirely convincing at present. Next is what do we know about the biological markers of oocyte quality and also of endometriosis? And what does endometriosis do on these? We know that oocytes from endometriosis have an increased cortical ground cell loss. So ground cell seems to get lost more often. There's hardening of the zona pellucida. There are less M1 oocytes reaching M2. So that transition between M1 and M2 is much less. The question also gets asked is, oh, are there any spindle abnormalities? We don't think there are spindle abnormalities in mild endometriosis, but in severe endometriosis, the spindle apparatus in the cell is affected. And there is this huge input in the technology to see whether we can do ICSI and improve results. And that's something which is still very much in being investigated. But also remember that there is spindle abnormalities more commonly seen in PCOS which also may be affecting the quality of oocytes that we see. What happens with mitochondria? At present, we do have the technology which looks at mitochondrial DNA. And I often put it more simple. What are mitochondria? They're the engine. And the engines, the batteries tend to get lower, slower. And they're the energy factors of the cell. And if your mitochondrial DNA starts going down, the energy in the cell is likely to go down. And that's probably in the next two or three years will be the focus of research in the world is looking at mitochondrial DNA 
and to be able to quantify mitochondrial DNA. We know that mature oocytes have a high mitochondrial content. We also know that mitochondrial abnormalities are seen with age and as age advances, mitochondrial quality starts decreasing. But we also have seen that in endometriosis, a lower amount of mitochondrial DNA is seen. So the question now comes up is, is oocyte quality in endometriosis affected? And the answer is yes, it is affected. From a treatment perspective, what, can, what do we see? We see there's a 7% reduction in fertilization with IVF. Oocyte numbers are 1.5 times less in ovarian endometriomas and you see less metaphase 2 oocytes. You see a decreased number of mature oocytes in endometriosis. After surgery, few studies have found that there's a decrease in reduction of fertilization rates. If you look at the ASRM website and database, there's significantly lower fertilization compared to tubal infertility. And if you put oocytes of, do, of endometriosis patients into donors, pregnancy rates probably are affected too. But this is a very old study of 1994. The other question is, is endometrial receptivity affected? That's something which we'll, we are still investigating and we do not have the answer. Can we change oocyte quality in endometriosis? And the answer is no, you can't. There's nothing in at present that can change the quality of oocytes in endometriosis. In clinical practice, we know that surgical intervention has a negative impact on ovarian function and is unlikely to improve oocyte quality. So if you think that by doing surgery you're going to change things in terms of oocyte quality, the answer is no. The other thing which we believed a few years ago, that if you give three to six months of GNRH analog to suppress the endometriosis, then the endometrium would improve. And we were taught that it is not just the endometriosis in the ovary, but the endometrium and endometriosis which is affected. So three months of giving GNRH analogs suppressed the endometriosis, but also what did it do? It affected oocyte recruitment and your number of eggs that you ended up getting or oocytes you ended up getting were much lower. And I have, I have in fact stopped this in my practice of down-regulating before in endometriosis before collecting oocytes. What we know is that with metaphase 2 oocytes there was no benefit with this treatment. The higher doses of FSH did not work and in fact you started getting less eggs and that has not been proved. So if you're giving three months of, of GNRH analogs, it's based on very small studies and without good evidence. And then this paper looks at it extensively and says there is no evidence to suggest that giving three months to six months of GNRH analogs would be helpful. So I would often ask patients or in fact colleagues to say, go off, ask your doctor, do I really need that before my stimulation? Also, I tilt towards ICSI and I believe that there is a hardening of zona pellucida and I think ICSI does improve the chances of, of fertilization and we have seen that 73% fertilization compared to 54 But remember, IVF is done on all eggs, ICSI is done only on metaphase 2 eggs. So in summary, we know that endometriosis affects oocyte quality, there's not much you can do. What you have to decide is, can you prevent repeated surgery? Can you prevent lowering ovarian reserve? And if you can, that's one good step towards giving them better success. Thank you very much. I, I would be grateful if you could share this, show it to your juniors, create that interest in them. Again, a reproductive medicine is one of the fascinating branches where I will ask you, ask questions, ask why. Go to meetings, go to conferences, stand up and ask the question, not how. How is very simple. Ask the question why it happens. Why this treatment will work and why that won't work. Forget those fixed protocols. A complete waste of your time and 
your study. Think a bit differently. This is a brilliant subject and I hope through this medium I can change your insight into believing that there is no subject like reproductive medicine. Thank you.